Welcome to third and the last part of this series. In this part, I will be showing the lighting, rendering and the compositing. So let's get started. Let's open a blender and import the shot here. So this is my shot. The car comes here, about here and about here. The guy is moving out. And from about here, I want the transforming animation to start. You can see that this shot doesn't have any camera movements. So I don't need any tracking for this. But if your shot has camera movements, you need to do the 3D tracking first. Now what I need is a reference image to which I can match the camera of my scene. So about here, I will take a screenshot for this. To take this green shot, just choose your frame and hit render to generate a single image. Save this as well. Now back to our animation file. Create a camera here and place it about here. Now we need to add the screenshot to our camera. Select the camera, tab into the camera view and check this background images and import the screenshot here. So here is our screenshot. You can increase and decrease the opacity from here. So now what I'm going to do is I will match our CG car to the reference. I don't know the focal length at which this shot is filmed. So I will be eyeballing this. I will set it to 50 for now. To match the shot, we need to adjust the camera, not the car model. So to adjust the camera easily, I will add up an empty here. You will select the sphere empty. Now select the camera, then the empty, and then parent the camera to it. Now our camera is parented to the empty. Now try to match the car cast for the reference. I know it was very hard, but we will try our best to match it. You can try different focal lengths and different positions, rogations also. One small trick I want to show you. First, you line off one side of the car. As you can see, I'm matching this front part here. But this other side doesn't line though. So what I'm going to do is, I will go on this option and choose 3D cursor. Now zoom in to that side, which you had roughly matched. And then place your 3D cursor about here. Now select the empty. And now I can adjust the scale here. So the other side is still locked as you can see. And now it's just spending time to get it matched as close as possible. Try different positions, maybe the focal lens. So here you can see, this is the best I can do. This is the best I can match the car. It's looking okay for me. As we can see, I have changed the focal lens to 28. I believe this is the closest focal length at which the shot was taken. Now it's time for the lighting. For lighting up the scene, I unfortunately don't have any HDRI for this. So I have to manually light it up. For this, we need a similar HDRI. So I went to hdrihaven.com and and this is the best match I can find. Now download it back to the file. Go to this shader option and set it to world. And here add an environment texture and input the HDRI and also add the texture card in it and mapping nodes. Now I will check the reference and try to match it. So, so the rotation of the HDRI is bit off. You can rotate this HDRI from here. Hmm. Now the sunspot is way more close as for the reference. The colors of the HDRI are also very saturated. So what I'm going to do is add a hue saturation node and turn down the saturation a bit. This is looking fine now. As you can see, we also need the ground reflections. In order to do it, I will add a mesh plane place at to the center. Scale it a bit. We made this plane for only the reflection and the shadows and I didn't want it to be rendered. So go to its object properties 
and enable this shadow gacha so that it will not be visible to the camera view. As you can see, well, you are also getting the shadows as well. Now it is reflecting the white color of the plane, which we don't need. I want the reflections of the ground. To do that, select your ground plane and then tab it to the edge it mode and then subdivide it a couple of times. And then from the camera view, I will hit you and then project from view. What this will do is it will set our UVs from the camera view. So now what I'm going to do is add a new material here and at the base color slot, I will add the same screenshot that we took. So the image has been projected on the plane. This was cast a reflection to our car. Speaking of it, let's go to the rendered view. As you can see here, the car is now having the reflections, which is similar to the reference. Now I will go in the detailings. As you can see here, the car surface has this reflection of the tree, as you can see here. So I want this on my car too. So what I'm going to do is tab back to the solid mode and add a play and vote it hit and place it about here like this. The idea is to cover that tree and from there I tab to the edit mode and hit U project from view. Now as you can see the UVs have been projected. Try to cover the tree in the image. Now go to its shader and add a new shader here and now import the same screenshot here. As you can see here, we get the reflections, but it is very weird right now. So what I'm going to do is remove this principal shader and add the emission shader. Now I am getting the correct reflections as in the real car. You can see here. So with the same method, I will be doing the other reflections also, like this back blue light. I had used another plane here and placed it. Then I projected the UVs and applied the same material on this plane as well. So let's go to the image and check what else we can do to match it better. As you can see here, there's a light here, but it is very subtle in our render. So what I'm going to do is we'll add another light source. This will be our point light source and I will place it about here. Now you can see we are getting the same effect. One thing is important yet as we don't want these planes to be rendered. So what I'm going to do is go to its objects properties and enable the shadow catcher for both of them. Now the lighting and the shadows are done. Let's now render this. For the rendering, I'm using Cycles render engine with the samples of 512. I'm also using the denoise option here in the render with the optics denoiser because I have the Arcan's GPU. If you don't have the one, you can use open image denoise as well. And the other important setting is under fill. We have to check this transparent as well and also the blast because the windshield here. We also want the transparency here. It will help in the composition better. And the other thing I want to tell you is I am using standard color management because I had done the lighting in this. So I will render the animation in this color theme. If you want, you can change it to film Nick as well. And let's come to the output setting here. I had choose 1920 into 1080 resolution. Then I doubled it to 100% the just 4k and the other thing i want to show you is i'm going to the png sequence with the elsa channel because obviously i want the transparency so that is it for the rendering settings let's hit render let's look at the render sequence first so this is the png sequence which is rendered 
let's open up a compositing software. My case, that is After Effects. Let's import the shot first. Let's change the frame date to 24 FPS. And now, let's import our BNG sequence here. Change the frame grid for this as well. Now, drag the shot here to create a new composition. Let's print the PNG sequence in the composition as well. So about here, I want a transformer animation. I have also created a clean plate for this. So let's import that also. As you can see, we also need to rotoscope the guy. So I'll do the rotoscoping and let's see how the final shot looks like. Despite all of this work, the render is still unable to match the real car. We can clearly see a visible cut here between the real car and the CG car. So what I had done to make that smooth transition between the real car and the CG robot. So the projection mapping is a method where an image is being project on a 3D model. So what I'm going to do is, let's go to this part and select Blender file and open up this materials. And let's select all the materials from this and hit delete. This will delete all the materials on the model. Now back to the view here. So now what I'm going to do is select all these objects now go to this object, then clean up, remove unused material slots. Select one part of the car and then add a material. Rename the material to projection. Then go to this viewport display color and select a blue color for now. So now what I'm going to do is hit A to select all and make sure the last selection is the colored one. Now hit Control L and link materials. Now as you've been seeing, so most of the car has the material, but there are some of them which is left, so I will assign them manually. Here there are multiple material slots. Let's delete them. And do the same thing for the whole model. This is why I used viewport color, so that we can identify the material better. So now, dive into the camera view and then split this and add the UV editor. Let's import the screenshot here. So now what I'm going to do is I will project this image on the 3D model. So how I'm going to do that? Select all the objects, tab into the edit mode and select all the vertices and then hit U, project from view. And now go to the shader editor. and select our projection material. Let's import the screenshot here. We don't need this principal shader here. Connect the image directly to the material output. Now tab in to the material preview. The 2D texture is being projected on the 3D model. It looks fine in the camera angle but behind the camera, it looks horrible. We don't have to worry about that because they made this only from the camera angle. So that's okay. As you can see, when the robot's parts came in, it becomes some mess. But we don't have to worry because we only need the car projection here so that later 
we can use it for the transition from the real car to the CG car. So render this as well. So the trick here is, suppose example this part, example this part is moving. Now this will be the projection. Whenever this sudden impact is happening, it will turn into the CG render. So example this wheel here. This is projection for now. And when this intact is happening, it will turn to the CG render. So how we will do this? We have to make a mask for each of these objects so that they can manipulate the opacity of each part individually in the After Effects. So in order to do that, we made mask. Let me show you the masks. So this is the image projection render here. Let me show you the masks. So here it is the mask too. This is for the windshield. This is for the dyes. This is also for other part. So what I will do is I will add these masks to our projection render and then simultaneously we'll do the transition from projection mapping to the CG render with the help of opacities. Let me show you. This is the CG render here. And on top of that, these are all the mask layers of the projection renders. As you can see here, this is the door. It is the projection render right now. And then you play, is it turn into the CG render? I used opacity keyframes here for the transition. Another example here, this is the projection render. And then it turns to the CG render. Whenever the impact is happening, turn it into the CG render. What is impact here? A sudden big movement of animation happens is the impact. So whenever it happens, turn it into the CG render. So here, as you can see, this render is represented in two colors. The blue color one is the projection mapping render and the red one is the CG render that we have done. So by combining all of them, you will get a decent result. And now when you use this render to overshot, it looks something like this. As you can see here, there is no noticeable cut here. The transition between the real car and the CG car is very smooth right now. Now the only thing which is left is add the FX elements, the sparks, the dust particles, etc. And add a good color grade to the shot. And you are done. So this is it for this series. Hope you like this. And if you want me continue doing this stuff, please like and subscribe to my channel. Bye.